Ugh. Hello? Hello? Hello, hello, I'm here. Hey, Andrei Dmitrich, hi, how are you? I'm well. So, Who am I uh, speaking to? Who am I speaking Max, to? This is Maxim. Maxim. Ah, ah. Greetings. Greetings. So, I just wonder uh, um, were you, uh, were you uh, an incarnated angel? An angel? No. I was not an angel, but I was a someone, if you would call it creator being, yes. Uh -huh, I, uh -huh. I was not an angel, though, but I am familiar with the different angels that exist, yes. Uh-huh. What is it that you would like to know? Um, yep, uh, many things. Are you following the DNA resonance research? Because you were pretty knowledgeable about uh, science of DNA. I was knowledgeable about many things because I made myself aware. But what did you want to know about DNA? I, I'm researching the DNA resonance, basically how the DNA vibrates and resonates. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, and, I'm and aware that who you are then. I've, uh, I am interested in um, what you are doing. <laughs> you are, it's fascinating. I, I did not delve into it as deeply as you did, but um, I see that there is um, a great deal of information that I did possess. Mm -hmm. So I am uh, encouraged by what you are doing and I see future uh, applications for it. Uh huh. So here is, can you look at the screen? The, here is the um, so called tree of life. Yes, that is it. Yes. And also it's called Sefirot. Yes. It's, it's from Kabbalah, from Jewish uh, mystical tradition. Yes. And um, also it's very closely connected to the idea of uh, flower of life. Of but course. <coughs> tree of life is a, it's a subset of the flower of life. It's a smaller side part, which is closer to the physical side and um, the design of the matrix. Correct. So I just wonder if uh, I was looking for that structure in the DNA, and so far I didn't find it there. Uh, no, you will not find it exactly like that. Um, it, there are some circuitries that are like this in the DNA, but you will not find this exact. Um, there will be similarities, but remember this. There is no exactness. Um, th how do I put this? There are so many different layers to the even understanding of the DNA that... Oh, Laying this over top of it, you will see parts of it in different elements of this structure. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Mm -hmm. it's, it's multifaceted. This structure speaks to all the different layers of the DNA, the layers of it. And so some parts of this speak to one layer, and some parts of it speak to the other different layers that there are there. So you must understand structure of DNA is very symmetrical like this in, in many ways. But there is, if you look at parts of it separated from each other, there is asymmetry as well that is connected with a powerful connections in the DNA circuitry. So mm -hmm. do not always look at DNA as symmetry, but look at it as a, a, a symmetrical design as you see the human body, all right? That is the symmetry of DNA, is what it creates, all right? But 
in its patterns and its actions, reactions, and modifications of chemical and electrical actions, it is not necessarily symmetrical. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So, good. like, my uh, problem of today, which I'm working on, uh, so th th there is like, um, DNA is made of steps. Yes, and each yes. step is a base pair. So the two bases come together and couple. Right. And then there is two most base pairs. So they're stuck to each other like that. Correct. That's, and that's, that's well known. That's now, symmetry. Uh, I, I discovered that there is a proton bonding between two, two steps. They bind to each other through uh, proton bonds. Yeah. And make a, make a circuit. Make a oh, closed yeah. circuit. A closed circuit, yes. <laughs> so imagine the DNA strand, and there is one, st one base pair, another base pair, and a circuit. So the, all the circuits are bound to the same wire. So they, they form like circuits like that. Two circuits bound to a certain wire. And so, the, so they all bound, they have like squares having common, common side, and then there is like Circuit, circuit, no circuit. Circuit, circuit, no circuit. Circuit, circuit. That's the most typical pattern in our human DNA. Two circuits, a break. Two circuits, a break. So it's like... And the uh, circuits are there to lock and unlock signals and to uh, give you different patterns of DNA, from, uh, different uh, different patterns of how things are moving, mostly chemicals and electrical uh, patterns. Right, right, right. Go ahead. So that's, that's the understanding which you already have. Now, that line, that line, uh, that chain stops at somewhere. There are breaks in the chain. So there is a chain with, with uh, square circuits, and then there is a, a stop, then another chain. So I'm trying to figure out how that, and that chain doesn't seem to be uh, connected to anything else. It's kind of hanging in the air, insulated. And I'm trying to figure out how it is read. What is it that is reading that complete chain of circuits? It's read, uh, it has to be read by chemicals and, and by charges, electrical charges. But, the thing is, it is connected by also the um, the cl mm, there's an energy that connects everything in the DNA, but and within that energy field, there's movement, and that movement is can be chemical or electrical. How's that? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It's an energy field. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now the energy field that is there that supports it in midair, if you will, is, is, that, um, is the energy that you really haven't discovered yet. It's a, an energy that is, mm, it's, it's part of the DNA, but it's not a discovered part of the DNA yet. Mm -hmm. And in that energy field, it can control electrical pulses and chemical reactions. Okay. Yeah, that's part of, it's one of our hypotheses that we're just dealing with something which is uh, non-physical. Correct. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely right. Okay. Um, switching back to the politics. Um, you had a great vision back then. Do you have any message for now? Which great vision are you uh, talking about? Um, mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, your first publication was 1968, and then you continued until 89. And <laughs> it was about the same vision, basically, uh, peace on earth and uh, uh, improvement of social structures in a way that become self-sustaining and non-destructive. Oh, yes, that has to happen. It It is... It is a an absolute necessary thing. It it wasn't so much as a 
a prediction as an inevitability. All right. It's a thought process that has to become inevitable because if it does not, then we will lose track of a structure altogether in some way. And that can't happen. You don't understand what I mean, I'm sure, but the th social breakdowns are happening at this time in your world. Polarization <laughs> and mm -hmm. social destruction. Um, even family units are being torn apart at this time, and they must be solidified once again, eventually. And because if this continues to happen with this polarity, it will destroy the, a, a, a portion of the fabric of civilization that keeps things in touch with one another. You will become factions that will be incommunicado one with another, and that cannot happen or should not happen. <clears throat> the picture a world that has well in many ways it is the way it is now you are in not in communication with certain parts of the world which have important information for the entire world and so therefore you need to maintain uh, a positive interaction and get rid of the polarity so that communication can be once again a little more pure, a little bit more informative in a positive way. Do you get that? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, that's pretty, it makes sense, but uh, I know. The yes, I know is, what you how, think. How do we get there? How do we get there? Of course, you will, don't worry. It is happening. Uh, so when you were um, doing the things, you, you made two huge changes in uh, human history. Uh, was it predetermined or was it a free choice? It's always a free choice unless you are sent to do exactly what you are supposed to do. And even then, you do not have to do what you were sent to do. So it is a matter of choice. Um, so are you working in, um, in a group? Basically, there was possibly others who were sent to do the change. Yes, I'm working in groups. I like, I like to be a free thinker, but I also like to work with others because formulation of thought comes from um, much banter. So although you may have an idea, it may not be perfected until it's run through the fire of many different heats. All right. So I'm... I feel very insulated here. I have the ideas, but I have trouble bringing them to the people. Trouble. Uh, yeah. I, I wish for people to be excited. And so far I have like very tiny response from people. How do I change that? Mm. Perhaps it's the way you present it. I am not sure. I have to look and see what, how, things are going for you in that way. I've really not looked into it. But I would like to see that you get a greater understanding with others. I think what you, many times I believe that you know the answers and that is why you don't listen to some of the things they say because it's old information. But what I've learned is this, even if information is old, you still have to listen to it before you present yourself new. And bring along with that new information some of the old information to comfort those that are 
from the old schools. So therefore, pad your very new wonderful information in al already known information as well to make them feel comfortable, but also to lead them in the proper direction because they will be much more acceptable to your information if they can be um, understanding that they know part of the old information. That's a great advice. Yes. Uh, so, um, you died from heart attack, but um, I wonder if you were killed by the uh, wave technologies. No, it was heart attack. I told him, if you're going to kill me, make it fast. And he goes, okay. <laughs> so I, I did not know which way to go, but heart attack, yes. I was not murdered. They wanted me to stay around longer. I did not. Uh, so it wasn't KGB doing their nah. stuff? Nah. Are you sure? They didn't have a chance. <laughs> no, it wasn't them. At least, if it was them, I don't know it. Yeah, they, check didn't it out. Come, they didn't make it aware to me that that's what was happening. If that happens, that's okay. I can maybe look back and see. But I wasn't interested in how I went. Just, I was ready to go. Ah. So if they helped, you were still ready. <clears throat> yeah. I just said, hey, when my time comes, it will come. I was very practical and pragmatic. Uh, a day before you died, you wrote that uh, you and the, your wife are together, and that's the most important thing. Yes. But then, but then next day you left. Yes. Well, it was important. I knew that there was something wrong. I was feeling not so good. So whenever you're not feeling good and you feel like that, you write things like that. Because it's, you, it makes you think about uh, love and all those things that sometimes you took advantage of. I was not the most giving and wonderful husband because I was working all the time. But uh, at those moments when you feel bad and when you're feeling not so good, you remember how good people were to you. And that makes you feel so fortunate. There was a moment that um, you almost died after you uh, made the bomb. You almost died, and then somehow they miraculously brought you back to life, and you had a second life. Yeah, I wasn't ready to go yet. <clears throat> it wasn't time yet. So they, they brought me back, and I was like, oh, thank goodness, yes. So um, I needed, there was more I needed to do. So yes, I need mm -hmm. to do more. God provides these miracles. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you very much. Uh, it was great to connect to you. And I would welcome your input on my uh, endeavors in science course, and, uh, and bringing that to the people as well. Good uh, speaking to you. Now it's time for me to close the session. I will help you that. Okay, very good. Have a good day. Good conversation. Goodbye. Bye. <sighs> Hello. Ah, uh, welcome back. <clears throat> Ooh, okay. Hi. <laughs>